Welcome to another Photoshop tutorial. With this video, let us transform this waterfall landscape into this final image. For the purpose of this tutorial, I want to focus a little more on the masking aspect, but I will be showing the complete post processing from start to finish. If you want to follow along, you can find a link to download the raw file in the description of the video. And now let's begin. Now, the first thing I want to change is to adjust the profile. That means I'm going from Adobe Color to Adobe Landscape and you can see how this will nicely boost the overall saturation of this image. And that's a great start since I want this image to be vibrant. Then let's go through the basic tab. First off, the white balance. It's very obvious that this image has a strong blue color cast. So we can easily fix that up by just adjusting the temperature bringing it up slightly until we get something that looks a little more natural. I actually think I want to go a little higher than usual, giving this image some kind of soft golden hour light, just like this. I'm not going to touch the tint. The next step for me would be to adjust the overall exposure. Take a look at the histogram. You can see it's looking pretty good. There is a little bit of underexposure going on, but that shouldn't be a big deal. However, what I want to do is to just raise the exposure, making everything slightly brighter. And of course, in the sky and in the waterfall, we might lose a bit of detail in the highlights. So to counter that problem, I'm just going to bring them down. That should be enough. And at the same time, I want to bring up the shadows, making the darkest parts a little brighter. And I'm also going to raise the blacks. All right, exposure wise, it looks Better. Now I do want to add a little bit of texture, giving this image a clear look. And I'm also going to add clarity. And then I am going to bring down the dehaze, which will add some artificial haze lingering over the whole image. I think this looks pretty good in this case. It doesn't work for every image, however. And of course, we want to raise the vibrance. All right. So that's the image after the base adjustments. You can nicely see how we fixed that very cold white balance and we also adjusted the exposure in a very good way. Now let's go on with the masking. For this image, there are a lot of masks involved and I just with this video want to show you a few neat little tricks you can use on your images. The first effect I always love to add is some kind of polarization effect on the sky. In this case, we have a pretty clear edge between the sky and the landscape, so we can make use of that sky selection mask. This works pretty well. So what I want to do here is to make the top part of the sky darker without affecting the left side, because right here is where the sunlight is coming in. So that means we need to somehow erase that part from this mask. How can we do that? That is very, very easy. We just need to hit that subtract button and choose a linear gradient. And then just create one like this and you can see how the overlay of the mask is changing. So we can nicely get rid of the brightest parts of the sky. And all that's left to do now is to just bring down the exposure for a very cool contrast rich sky. Then let me add some simple glow. And if you have watched a few of my videos, you know how that is going. Just use a radial gradient. And I'm going to create it over the brightest parts of the image, just there where the sunlight is coming in. I'm making sure the, out the center of this radial gradient is outside the image, so we get a natural effect. And once that is set up, just increase the blacks and drop the dehaze for a stronger glow effect. Wonderful. That should be enough. Maybe place it a slightly higher. Next up, I want to use another radial gradient and I'm going to use this one to add details to the waterfall. So I'm going to rotate it, trying to cover most of the waterfall like this. If you want to just select the waterfall without the areas around it, we could use something like the intersect feature. So for that, click on those three dots choose intersect mask with and let's see i think i'm just going with the color range mask and click right there in the white part another tool we could use to more precisely select the waterfall is the brush so let's go to add and choose brush 
here it's important to select the auto mask tool just to be safe and then i'm just going to brush over it like this all right that looks good to me now let's add a bit of detail i want to bring down the shadows and thus just introducing some more contrast i want to bring up the whites just to brighten up the waterfall and then what really helps to bring out all those details is to pump up the clarity and I also want to introduce a little bit of texture. This looks like a really cool waterfall. But let's also enhance the spray of the waterfall right here on the left side. Again, I'm starting with a simple radial gradient, covering just most of it like that. The problem is we do have selected the grassy field in the foreground as well. So I want to say subtract and here I'm choosing a color range mask. And then just click right there in the green area. This is removing all the green color tones from the radial gradient. If this color range mask is not wide enough, we can just use the refine slider, bringing it up and thus just nicely fixing that selection. How can we enhance that waterfall spray? First off, I want to make it brighter by just raising the exposure. So this will make it a lot more visible. Then let's again use some clarity to add structure. And I'm going to use negative dehaze to make the mist a little thicker. I'm not sure why the Photoshop menu is jumping around like crazy when I push the dehaze slider, but that's a new bug to me. However, I'm just going to set the dehaze to negative 13. All right, now let's also enhance that green foreground right here. Let's create a new mask and here we can just use a color range mask and click right in here. This is nicely selecting the foreground, but again, we have a few parts of the image selected which we don't want to change. So just make use of the subject button one more time, choose a linear gradient and get rid of everything except the foreground. Once we have done this, I just want to bring up the clarity, making the lower part just more interesting now let's see what else can we do i think the very top part of the sky could use some more darkness but instead of using a simple sky mask i want to use a different approach i'm going to use a linear gradient just like this only targeting the very top part of the sky but of course we don't want to select the landscape so let's just use the intersect tool one more time Click on those three dots, choose intersect mask with and choose sky. And now let's just bring down the exposure a bit more, just like that. Okay, let's see. I think I want to introduce some color using a radial gradient on the left side. I'm going to make it nice and big like this, rotate it. And again, make sure the center is outside the image. How can we add color? We could either use the white balance tool here, or we could just click on that little box. Set up the hue. I want to go somewhere in the yellow range. And now let's pump up the saturation some more. So the color is actually visible. Perfect. Finally, I have the feeling the foreground and especially the shadows in the foreground are a little too warm. So I want to fix that. Let's start with the sky selection. Of course, we don't want to change the sky, so we need to hit the invert button. And just like that, we have all the landscapes selected. Now, the problem is I don't want to change those trees getting hit by the sunlight. In this case, let's say subtract, choose color range, and just click in here. Perfect. And with that selection, we can now safely bring down the temperature of the white balance. Introducing some more natural color tones here to the shadows. And I think I could also drop the exposure just a bit, which will give us some more contrast. All right, and I think that's it for all the masks involved. So let me deactivate them all. We went from this to this. It's a rather subtle change, but we made sure to not overdo it. And I think the results are looking very, very good. Now let's continue doing a little bit of color grading for this shot. I'm starting in the color mixer. 
I just want to bring up the yellow saturation and notch as well as the green tones and the blue tones. All right, that looks great. We could also do some split toning in the color grading tab. So for the highlights, again, I'm going with a warm hue to emulate that golden hour light. Bring up the saturation some more. Perfect. And then let's also head into the midtones since at this point we are starting to get some warmer lights in the shadows again. And using the midtones, we can counter that. So I'm setting up the hue to something cold and just bring up the saturation. Perfect, done. Now the only thing left to do in the raw adjustments is the sharpening in the details tab. As always, I'm using the same settings here and bring up the amount of sharpening. Perfect. And that's the image after the raw adjustments. You can see we went from this original raw file to this. Looks so much better. Now we can adjust a few more things in Photoshop. So let's open up this object. First, of course, we want to get rid of this thing right here. I'm duplicating that layer by hitting Ctrl J just to have a backup. Then I'm grabbing the lasso tool by pressing L and I'm just making a very rough selection around this thing. Once that is done, hit Shift F5 with content aware selected, hit OK. It's not doing that great of a job, but I think it should be fine since it's only a tiny area. Next up, let me add a little bit of autumn glow. Again, I'm duplicating that layer by hitting Ctrl J. Then we want to add into filter, blur, Gaussian blur to add the blurry effect. And with a radius of 30 pixels, I'm going to hit OK. Go to edit, choose fade Gaussian blur, switch the mode to lighten and bring down the opacity. I want to just have a very subtle effect like this and hit OK. Now I'm not quite happy with that glow over the foreground. So what we can do here is to use a mask, then grab the brush by pressing B, set the foreground color to black, make sure the brush opacity is set to 100%, and then I'm just going to brush over the foreground. I also want to do a little bit of dodging and burning. So let's create a new layer, switch the blending mode to overlay, and first off, I want to burn a few things. To do that, I need to create a selection targeting the shadows of the image. I can hit Ctrl Alt 2, which will select the highlights. Now, if I invert this selection, I will get the shadows. So to invert this selection, I'm going to hit Ctrl Shift I. And with that selection, I'm going to hit the layer mask icon. And now I have created something like a luminance mask. Again, I'm using a black brush and just brush on that overlay layer. Actually, let's set this blending mode to soft light, which makes it a little more subtle. And let's drop the brush opacity and that should be good. Now let's just brush over a few areas right here. And doing this will help creating some more contrast. So that's looking really, really good. I also want to dodge the highlights. So again, create a new layer, switch the blending mode to soft light. Again, we are going to hit Control Alt 2, which selects the brightest highlights of the image and then just click on the layer mask icon. Since we want to dodge things, we need to set the foreground color to white. And now just carefully brush over a few areas right here. I want to brighten up those brighter spots in the foreground, but that's looking great. At this point, we're almost done. I do want to play around with a few Nick collection filters though. So what I want to do next is to merge every layer into a single new layer by hitting Control Shift Alt E, and then let's go to filter, Nick collection, color effects pro 4. Okay, what I want to do here is to add some warmth to the sky. And I'm usually doing this by using the Brilliance Warmth effect, just bringing up the warmth here. Maybe even the saturation some more. I think this looks great. So let's hit OK. Of course, we don't want the foreground to be selected. So again, we are just making a clever selection here. Let's go to Select and choose Sky. With that selection, again, click the layer mask icon. And now the warmth is only applied to the sky, as you can see when I'm deactivating this layer. 
This effect might still be a little too strong, so let's just play around with, with the opacity. But I think something like this looks quite good. Then I do want to apply one more Nick Collection filter, so let's again hit Ctrl, Shift, Alt, E, go to Filter, Nick Collection, Color Effects Pro 4. And this time we are looking for the Detail Extractor filter. This makes the image look very, very grungy, but we want it to just get some more detail out of this waterfall right there, as you can see. So we could maybe add a little more contrast and drop the amount of detail extracted. But I think this is looking very good, so let's apply it like that. All right, perfect. Of course, we only want this effect over the waterfall, so I'm going to hold on the alt key and click on the layer mask icon to create a black layer mask. Now set the foreground color to white and use the brush tool to paint in that detail. And we are done. So I hope this Photoshop tutorial was helpful and interesting. As always, if you have questions left, feel free to ask in the comments and thank you so much for watching this video.